afternoon Southern Latitudes people and I just wanted to tell you I uh, woke up at the crack of dawn and um, I, I had it in my mind just to do cucumbers this morning it's Monday morning and uh, and I know there's a lot of rain coming and I'm thinking that would be great to have it all germinate but you know no wind if your seed is planted under the ground but then as I got out here I got to thinking I have all these tomatoes that are about you know a, anywhere between a few inches to a foot you know tall and um, they really are going to be taller and thicker than a cucumber on a trellis and so it was really important for me to go ahead and um, make this the back row now I originally had this planned where it was going to go north garden but I threw that out the window uh, I like tomatoes close to where I can keep an eye on them because um, it's a high high value crop. Now, what's in here is uh, these are my saved Immokalee tomato seeds somewhere about in there. Then we have just like four of the Moby Cherry tomatoes. I have a few volunteers and then we have, what is that, like eight, one's kind of wilty, um, tomatillos. And then... In this back section, I put in seed for Max Pack uh, Pickling Cucumbers. And up here, I put in uh, Market More Slicing Cucumbers. And in the back, I have the Lemon, is it Lemon Drop or Lemon Sun? Sun Drop. The, yeah, Lemon Sun Patty Pan uh, Cucumber uh, Squash in here. So they're like two seeds per foot. And I don't know what that, how many feet that is. But so, so that's what we got there. This spot right here is still blank. And I had considered some zephyr squash in there. But I'm, I think I'll hold off on those until spring. Let's just go with some patty pans real quick for the fall. And, um, and, and then the next row over when I get more compost. That will be all of my salanovas. I have that already planned up here. You know, I'm really not sure. I got to refer back to notes. Of course, notes kind of went out the window when I, the cucumbers were supposed to be in the back side of salsa. And so these were going to be brassicas up here. And I just, I, I don't know. It's where we dump the compost. And those are the things pressing in my mind. I really need to get some more cucumbers, pickling cucumbers going so I can go ahead and um, make pickles this fall. And because I didn't get to do that this spring uh, and I'm not, I guess I did it last spring but anyhow we can never have enough pickles I make I have a recipe for Wickles pickles and we just eat through those jars really quick and so that's really high um, commodity around our house uh, if nothing else we got to get some cucumbers going in 2023 all right let's um, oh and I counted it and there's about 80 between seeds and transplants, I think we'll have about 80 babies with the two and a half rows of what I just did. So that'll be good. Now, let me take you back up front. So behind me here is South Garden. And um, last week I started noticing a very strange phenomenon where I was having wasps on the um, weeds at night. And they're not there during the day. They're perfectly fine. There's nothing flying around well maybe a little stuff flying around but the night is when it really flies around and um, it's whatever this weed is right here and it's just it loads up with with the wasps at night so I got my macro lens out took some pictures of it and submitted it to um, the coast to coast uh, wildlife and snakes ID and uh, I see a lot of people from Florida, so I wonder if it's like Florida based, but really they just do all around the country. So I got some information now uh, on what we're dealing with here in the garden. And um, I'll just go ahead and read off the note cards because there's no way I'm going to get all this genus species right without a note card. So they are called Dylas SP, I think that species, Scolid wasps and um there's like a, a whole bunch of them there's like six genera of them genuses and 20 species of the scolidae scolidae 
I'll put all those words down below because I'm not saying them right, I'm sure, in North America. Now there are some specific to Florida, just specific to Florida, and then there's some are Caribbean and Floridian, and then there's some around the rest of the United States. But uh, just to name some few, uh, a few of them, she wasn't specific on my variety, but there's the feather-legged, there's the Caribbean, there's the hairy-footed, the Toltec, the three-banded, and the eight-banded. Um, another nickname for them is digger wasps uh, because they, I, I don't know if it's just a female, but they will dig down into the ground and go for um, the beetles and they'll lay their eggs on the, uh, they'll sting them, kill them, and lay their eggs in there, and then that provides food for the larvae as they're growing as part of their life cycle. So um, I thought that was really cool. And so that must mean, you know, I don't know what they're feeding off of on the weed itself, but, you know, they must be around here because, you know, beetles, um, if that's part of their life cycle. So I, and let's see if I can get in kind of close on one of these weeds. See how they fold over? I didn't know if that was them putting larva in here. I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Here, let's see if I can find a better example. See how these are folded over? And I wasn't sure if that was them. Also, you'll see between the pictures and maybe here, but there's little... I don't know if they're blooms there's little bitty dots in there and um they really love going to that so i don't know if that's a nectar i don't know what it is it's really just the coolest thing to me uh, that this is going on you can kind of see them a little bit but a lot of what they do is like a figure eight pattern and then they um which is very low that i don't they don't usually come up like waist high and above so um and you know they just love the ground or stay right above the ground so i thought that was very cool now it's going to be very tricky when i want to wipe these things out trying to get them out of you know pull the weeds right now i have the watermelon the sugar baby watermelon and then the um georgia rattlesnake if there's any of those left but the sugar baby seem to be thriving through the summer and uh, i have girl and boy blooms and so it's just really tricky to get in here so i'd have to pick my timing really carefully um but i'll give them as long as possible because there's not anything that this is always for my coal crops usually my my kale goes up here lettuces go up here um stuff like that so i i hate to disturb them i do have a few of these weeds over here in the flower bed i'll let those i don't think they're over here quite as badly though so I could probably pull all these out one get up real early one morning before the bees do and pull that out but anyhow I just thought I would let you uh, know about a new pollinator we have in the garden uh, new to me I'm sure it's been here forever but we're apparently providing some sort of host plant for it which is super cool all right now let me give you an update on the weather and what I think is going to happen for my area all right, so I'm going to stay in the shade a little bit while I close out. So hurricane something. <laughs> Can't, I haven't learned to say its name yet. I, I Something with an I, right? Um, is coming. And I'm not too worried over here in Brevard County. So it looks to me like as of this morning's um, forecast that I'm only looking at about 40 mile per hour winds and so we're not going to do a lot of prep work you know anything loose not tied down you know we'll either put low or put in the shed um the baby seedlings will stay out during that uh i don't believe they've predicted for my uh county so like two inches or less one to two inches that's every day in summer for us so i'm not going to do anything really different to uh how i garden I'm just going to keep plugging along, stay in when it's not raining, stay out of the food forest when it's windy. Um, for you guys that are in uh, like the <laughs> so in the Big Bend area or um, the Panhandle, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. Even South Georgia, I see you, you guys are going to get hit with like a few inches 
and then high, much higher winds. So my thoughts and prayers will be with you guys. And, uh, you know, let me know in the comments below how you come through it or if you're preparing, if you're not going through it yet, but you will. And you want to just, you know, type it out and tell me your game plan. That's cool, too. And, uh, and I wish you all the best. So, you guys, that's it for today's video. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.